Since Biden took office, the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, has been on a rampage. Okay, Lena Khan has been the best FTC chair we've had in decades. And it's because she's actually using the authority of the FTC to go after big business. When we look at the stuff that she's going after mergers and stopping the big acquisitions of these huge companies, um, and she's trying to use the authority of the FTC to do what she can to stop unfair market competition. Mm -hmm. One of the big things was relates to non-compete agreements. And we've talked about this on the show, actually, I think just a few weeks ago, we talked about how a Pennsylvania judge protected the FTC's ban from non-competes. And so what is a non-compete? A non-compete is when you work at a place and the employer makes you sign on the dotted line and they're like, okay, you're not allowed to go work anywhere else for in a related field for this amount of time after leaving this company. Yeah. You think that's like a thing that only applies to high income individuals, right? No. No, we saw it huge in the fast food markets going yeah. on in California, right? Because otherwise it would be too easy for those workers to move between jobs, according to the, their corporate overlords. Right, according is. to their corporate overlords. It's like 30 million people are signed on to a non-compete agreement. Mm -hmm. And then, the, so the FTC started this, um, this started this study from 2018, actually. They began looking into this. And they're, okay, what is the actual economic and market impact of non-compete agreements. And they saw like $200 billion of business growth and a huge reduction in startups getting created because all these people with big bright ideas were locked in all these other jobs yep. that they couldn't take the skills they were accumulating mm -hmm. and applying it somewhere else. And so this non-compete rejection um, actually had some good support between libertarians and Democrats, liberals and freedom loving marketeers because it's a, it's a constraint on the market. Yes. Right? Well, and it also makes sense. I mean, I feel like liberals in general are moving, I mean, they're moving towards well-regulated markets, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean, um, that, that doesn't mean constricted markets. It right. doesn't mean like you're choking off their ability. It's like, no, we just want to allow the flow that of the market to channel strongly yes. in a direction that is helpful for workers, mostly. Yes, that's exactly right. And so the FTC Act, okay, the FTC was made by the FTC Act back in 1914. Okay, it's been around for a very long time. And there are certain sections that discuss, okay, what are you allowed to do as the FTC? So Section 5 is where a lot of the meat of the FTC comes in. And it was amended in 1938 during the New Deal to give it a little bit more oomph, mm. okay? So in the in this 1938 amendment to Section 5, it says, the commission is hereby empowered and directed to prevent persons, partnerships, or corporations from using unfair methods of competition in or affecting commerce and unfair or deceptive acts or practices in or affecting commerce. So that's a big piece of power right there, mm -hmm. okay? But notice here, it talks about prevent persons, prevents partnerships. And so it it can be interpreted that that's very individualistic, that they are only allowed to go after bad actors, not blanket the market with a general rule, mm. okay? But then Section 6 comes in, and Section 6 says it gives the FTC additional powers to make rules and regulations for the purpose of carrying out the provisions of this subchapter. So that's Section 6G, okay? So that's all you got to know. Section 5 and Section 6G. That is what gives the FTC its bite, its mm. power to put the guardrails up that you're talking about. Okay. Okay. Well, the FTC is getting sued for this non-compete agreement, and it's coming out from Texas this time. And it's from the Chamber of Commerce, the largest U.S. business group in the country. Okay. These guys are bringing up a massive case. And the main thing that they're attacking the FTC on is whether or not they even have the statutory authority to not just make rules related to non-compete agreements, but to make rules at all. And so I, as someone who keeps up with this stuff, was thinking, okay, listen, there's really, it's, it's going to be really, really hard for them to say the FTC isn't allowed to make rules of the road. That, has, that, that goes a long way, especially since we have a doctrine in this country called Chevron that says that when a, congress, when a congressional statute is ambiguous towards how an agency is supposed to execute that statute, mm -hmm. you, 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 you defer and you give deference to the agency's interpretation. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, <laughs> we lost Chevron. We lost Chevron. Under the Looper-Bright decision, 
uh, two months ago, whatever it was, a month ago, uh, feels like an eternity ago, uh, Chevron no longer exists. So now the court doesn't have to give any deference to the agency's interpretation, even if the agency is the most knowledgeable people around the subject. Mm. Okay. This is all important because Looper Bright was just cited already in this case. And what did the judge rule? The judge ruled that Section 5 and Section 6G does not give the FTC authority to set any rules or any guidelines whatsoever. Holy shit. At all. Now, this has been the rules of the road specifically since 1962. Okay? 1962 was a huge year for the FTC. Because in 1962, we had this case um, in the D.C. District Court that explicitly said Section 5G plus Section 6G equals the FTC's authority to, to make these types of rules of the road mm-hmm. related to non-competitive practices. Well, something happened. Between 1962 and 1978, the FTC was on fire. And it, was, it put like 12 rules into play. Like, I think the, 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 the labeling on your cigarettes, that's an FTC rule, stuff like that. Okay. Um, in, 1960, in 1978, America embarked on a different type of economy. That's when the middle of the Carter administration, we started to shift towards a neoliberal era of economics. And then with the Reagan era, the FTC was neutered mm. and it was neutered on purpose. Right. And so the, the judge uses the fact that the FTC hasn't issued a rule since 1978 to as that evidence can't. that it can't. Because if the FTC had this power, why haven't they been doing it over the last 40 years? Obviously, it must be blurry. Otherwise, they would have been doing it. Wow. The conservatives have bootstrapped the elimination of the FTC yeah. by winning political power, appointing people to the FTC who don't want to make rules, the FTC not making rules, and then the court using the FTC not making rules as evidence that the FTC can't make rules. They bootstrapped this up for 45 years. That's and now the crazy. FTC could be totally neutered and it's going to go up to the supreme court now yes right which is uh, biased towards non-regulation of business i would say that's putting it lightly okay there have been three decisions over the last month and the end of this session that have completely changed the type of america that we live in sec versus jarksy corner post versus the federal board the federal reserve board of governors and lupus bright these Three cases, which we will talk about one day, I promise you, have fundamentally changed the America that we live in, okay? And so that's the Chamber of Commerce case. That's going to go up with the Supreme Court and it will determine if the FTC can make rules of the road. Oh my goodness. Now, that's not it. Oh, you know what? Let's talk about this case first, if you have questions related to this case. Um, I... I don't think so, no. I think you should roll ahead. Okay, because yeah. there's one more attack on the FTC, and the business lobbies are not stopping because they feel the wind is behind, the wind is in their sails right now. So the FTC has recently trying to stop Kroger from absorbing another food uh, grocery mm-hmm. place. I think it's over in Washington State, but that, that part's irrelevant. Um, the point is, it's like this $25 billion massive merger, and the FTC says, oh, it's going to stop, it has to stop the merger on ground, it's going to raise prices for consumers, and, you know, classic FTC stuff. It's what their job is. Well, the the way that they're doing it is they're putting this merger judge, judgment, the adjudication of the merger, through an administrative law judge. And but an administrative law judge for a summary judgment and a court. Okay. Now there's a difference. Administrative law judges are judges that are employed by the FTC, work inside the FTC, and are basically immune to political pressure. They have like this two level factor factorization mm. of of protection, right? Because the the administrative law judges are hired by the Federal Trade Commission people, and the Federal Trade Commission people are appointed by the president. So the administrative mm. law judges are pretty nonpartisan actors. Yeah. Right. Um, and also the FTC is pretty nonpartisan because you can never have, there's five people on the board, no more than three can ever be on the same party. So it's a fairly, anyway, um, now Kroger is saying that the use of these administrative law judges by the FTC is blatantly unconstitutional. And this ties in perfectly to the SEC versus Jarksy decision, where the Supreme Court ruled that the SEC can't use administrative law judges for cases of what? of handing out civil liabilities when it's in relation to common law. And I said at the time 
the next fight is going to be what the hell does common law mean? Mm -hmm. And now we are going to see if 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 the Supreme Court is going to stick by their SEC Jarksy decision yeah. and the the common law carve out, or they're going to expand that to mean literally everything. And if these federal agencies can't use administrative law judges and have to go through the federal court system for every single thing, nothing will ever get prosecuted. And you all don't of think so? well, all of I shouldn't say nothing. The medium sized cases will never get adjudicated just because they won't have enough resources. They won't have enough resources. This stuff costs money. It takes time. Mm. They won't have the money or the time to go after the small or the medium-sized fish anymore. Mm. Only the big fish. Which means it'll just be a much more difficult environment for businesses and consumers to navigate. Mm. Um, and so that's where we're at now. We have these two challenges coming up that are really going to define the next 10 years. Yeah, it also seems like it's putting on a playing field that's a lot more um, level between the government and companies because one thing we talked about in the past is that the uh these ftc or sec these internal adjudication bodies mm -hmm. they 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 know what's up they understand the the statutes that they're working with with the um regulatory i guess body or like the framework like the, the, laws. the yeah, laws they, they know the rules and these judges are not specialists in these these areas yes. right so because of that you're what i'm what i'm saying with like it being a level playing field isn't that the government totally had is like the the little guy business couldn't stand up to the government right it's more just that the little the big guy business might be able to manipulate or work judges in yes. normal courts better against the government it reminds me of when we first read um, Joseph Stiglitz, People, Power, and Profits, because he talks, he has this great term that we still both love, which is embedded liberalism, yeah. right? It's liberalism that is embedded within the rules that government sets out. This, to me, is a concerted attack on that embedded word. Yes. This is, let's embed government within us yeah let's be outside of what government can tell us to do that is absolutely a great way to look at it that is a hundred percent right yeah and so now the future of the ftc is in the supreme court's hands uh and it's also in our hands this is why elections matter because mm -hmm. these judges that get appointed up and down the ballot uh, i'm sorry up and down the whole country they get appointed from the people that you pick for president. Yeah. And this person who just ruled on FTC being unstatutorial and making rules was appointed by Donald Trump. Yeah. These things would not have happened if Trump was not president, period. These things really matter, and we got to get to work. So, we have a Patreon. And since you made it to the end of the episode, that means that maybe you are somewhat interested in the content we make, which, let me say... That's awesome. That's so cool that you think that we have good takes enough for you to watch our stuff. That yeah. means a lot. Thank you so much. You're probably wrong, but <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, if you want to support the show, and we post exclusive content on there, so if you want to see more of that, see us go deeper onto a few other topics, maybe some of the stuff we post on there is stuff that we think the normies on YouTube might be a little bit less interested in, but the nerds that want to go to Patreon are more interested in, feel free to check it out. There's going to be a link in the video description there's a link in the channel description as well perfect we would super appreciate it love you guys